Okay, so what I want you to see in this picture that I drew here is this is a graph of um, cyclin levels throughout the cell cycle. Okay, and so um, you can see here's the G1, S, G2, M, and C. Those are the parts of the cell cycle. And you can see it fluctuates, right? This would be if everything was going correctly and it was passing all the checkpoints. So here's our G1S checkpoint. Um, actually, I can do that. That'll work. Okay, so our G1S checkpoint is like there. Our G2M checkpoint is there. And then our spindle checkpoint is there. So you can see at all the checkpoints, it's going to be peaking if everything is okay. If not, it would be too low and it won't get past that checkpoint. So that's how you got to think about it. So now what we're going to talk about is the specific names for what's produced if everything goes correctly at each checkpoint. Okay, so here we go. So the G1S checkpoint, if you remember, that's going to be the one that's looking at the nutritional state of the cell and making sure that it has enough nutrition. If it does, what's going to happen is there's going to be an S phase, S phase specific cyclin that's going to be created that's going to combine with CDC2 kinase. Oh my God, that's a lot of words. Okay, don't freak out. So um, if we go back to this, I'm going to clear this out. Okay, so we're going to have... CDC2, which is just a specific type of kinase that we have as mammals, and that's going to combine with a special S phase specific cyclin. So this is a specific type of cyclin that's made during the S phase. So if those two come together because there's enough of this cyclin being produced, then the nutritional state of the cell is okay and it can move on to the next checkpoint. Okay, so that's going to be the first one, and let me clear that for you. All right, let's move on. Woo -hoo -hoo. That thing's doing crazy things. Okay, then we're going to go on to the G2M checkpoint. So remember, this is going to be the part where it's going to check that DNA was copied correctly. So what we call this one is MPF. Okay, so if we go back to this, what has to happen is we have our CDC2, right? And that has to combine with another type of cyclin. And all together, this whole thing is called MPF. So that's the whole thing, okay? Stands for mitosis promoting factor. Because right after this is when mitosis can actually go through. Okay, so mitosis promoting factor is going to be what this is called, and this is called as uh, this happens as a result of the DNA being copied correctly. All right, then we have our last one, which is going to be the spindle checkpoint. And remember, that's the one that's going to happen during metaphase, and it's going to make sure that all of the microtubules are attached. Now, if we look at our PowerPoint, at the end of metaphase, it's making sure that all these are attached. What's going to be created, if everything is attached correctly, is something called APC, which stands for anaphase promoting complex, because the next phase is anaphase, so it's going to promote that to happen, okay? So going back to here, we're going to have another CDC2, CDC2, and that's going to combine with another type of cyclin, whoops, cyclin, and so that whole thing together is called anaphase promoting complex, okay? So if that happens, then it can commit to the rest of mitosis and can let the sister chromatids split apart and everything's fabulous. However, we need to look at some wordiness in my notes here, okay? So what anaphase promoting complex is, is it's going to remove inhibitors of a protease that destroys the protein complex holding sister chromatids together. Oh my God, that's a lot of words. So let's just, let's just commit to this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right. So let me get a good color here for our um, chromosomes. Okay. So you've got your one chromosome here and you have the other one here. These are your sister chromatids, okay? In between, you're going to have, oops, in between, you're going to have um, this stuff here, okay? And that is called cohesin. The job of cohesin is that is a protein that holds these two together. 
Now, you're going to have an enzyme, or yeah, an enzyme here and here, okay? And that is called a protease. And the job of that protease is to break apart cohesin so that these two can go to opposite sides of the cell. But we don't want that to happen too early because if it happened too early, then we would actually have um, the, the sister chromatids floating around separately, and we don't want that to happen before anaphase. So there is actually this stuff like this, and this is an inhibitor. And the job of that inhibitor is to keep the protease from breaking down the cohesin too early. So let's go back to that checkpoint, APC, anaphase promoting complex. What that's going to do is that's going to come around and remove that inhibitor so that now that protease can actually bind to the cohesin, break that up, all of this gets broken apart, and now our two sister chromatids can go to other sides of the cell. Wow, that's crazy, huh? I know, I know, it's a lot. Okay, now the last thing we're going to talk about is what signals will start and stop the cell cycle. So obviously um, we've got all sorts of different things that will stop and start that cell cycle that we've already talked about. But another thing that can happen is something called density-dependent inhibition. And these are things that kind of stop you from having cancer because all cancer is is cells dividing out of control, basically, right? So density-dependent inhibition is going to be what prevents tumors from growing. And basically, when they get to a certain density, they're going to stop growing. And I have a picture of that here in my um, PowerPoint. Here we go. Whoops, not that. Density-dependent inhibition is here. So let's say you've got cells. They're perfectly spaced on, on this glass that they're growing on. If you remove a couple, then they just start growing back normally and just fill in, but they don't go any further. Okay. Um, another one is anchorage dependence, which is where they have to actually be attached to something in order to um, grow and multiply. Okay. Now, cancer cells, what they do is they don't listen to those um, density-dependent inhibition types of things. And so what they'll do is just start growing out of control, and that's how you end up with like a tumor. So um, there we go. So cancer is basically just cells dividing out of control. And what causes that to happen is it can totally screw around with the cell cycle. So one thing it can do is it can make their own growth factor. So they can actually um, you know, create hormones and things that are going to say it's okay to keep doing this. Um, they may make a fake one. Um, so that kind of fakes out the, the kind of cell cycle, and then they have an abnormal cell cycle. So basically those checkpoints aren't working, and so they can just go out of control and just divide, 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 even if everything is messed up. And <clears throat> now let's say that we form a tumor. There are going to be two types you can have. You can have a benign or a malignant. Benign is going to be where it just gets to a certain point, and then it just stops, right? So it's like a lump of abnormal cells, but that's it. Nothing really happening. Malignant is going to be where it forms that lump, but then it starts to invade other tissues. And from there, what it can actually do is what's called metastasizing, which is where it exports cancer cells to other parts of the body so that it can start to do that everywhere, right? And so that's when it gets pretty serious. So that's going to be how cancer basically works. And so it's all of those proteins that are going to be binding with that cyclin. And that's why if you decide to go into cancer research, you'll be doing tons of protein research because that's where they think the issue lies because that's what's kind of messing with the cell cycle. Okay, that was mitosis. Hope you enjoyed it.